On the heels of the 1st Canadian Army's formation in the field, the tactical picture in France clarifies. It develops into a grand encirclement of von Kluge's 7th German Army. American troops form the lower jaw of a grand pincer's movement. The 1st Canadian Army and the Corps sector, forming the other jaw, make preparation for a large-scale breakthrough. Their objective is to close the gap at the strongly held German fortress town of Pelais. The disposition of enemy forces is plotted by aerial reconnaissance. Sharp eyes seek out and report signs of enemy movement. are forcing their way down the Corps Falaise Highway, all Canadian elements are briefed preparatory to a mass drive by armor and infantry. Every commander calls his officers and men into frequent conference. In this way, every man knows the rapidly changing tactical picture. the movement order arrives. The full weight of Canadian armor maneuvers into a position of readiness for the all-out drive. Enemy forces are being methodically whittled down by endless barrages. Relentlessly, the Allied forces close in on the escape gap of the German army. The Canadian steamroller forges ahead. Layer after layer of stubbornly contested defense lines crumble as it advances astride the Palais Highway. The twin-pronged threat pounds into submission town after town. Soon Canadian spearheads are in sight of their objective, Berlin. Von Kluge desperately tries to retire his outmaneuvered army from the trap. A Canadian column moves off to the left and brings under fire his only main escape route, the Berlin Lisieux Highway. While General Patton's Third American Army is closing the gap from the south, Canadian armor surges forward, leaving behind pockets of futile resistance. Like great fists, the tank drives smash the breath from the enemy's body. Enemy retirement becomes a rout. Some panther units dribble through under cover of darkness. Infantry units are left to die or surrender. German 89th Infantry Division fall into our hands. After a terrific mauling by Canadian infantry early in the attack, 2,000 men from this division alone give up. During the battle, an American Liberator gets out of control. With two motors dead, the pilot is unable to land it. After the crew bails out, Typhoon shoot it down over open ground. It cracks up without damage to surrounding buildings. Other planes carry on the job. Finally, the crust of enemy resistance is broken. 
Canadians and British fight their way into the suburbs of Palais. The town is a mass of ruin from our aerial bombardment. It is necessary to fight for it street by street. Fanatical Nazi snipers still try to hold up our advance. Palace in our hands, the encirclement is complete. In utter confusion, the Nazis attempt every means of escape. There are but two means left, imprisonment or death. Soon the Palace pocket is eliminated. Our armies turn to drive to a greater objective, the borders of the Reich itself. 